Hi everyone. If you have a greyhound, you're going to need at least two different collars for them, a tag collar and a collar to attach their lead to for walking out. In this video, we're going to take a look at the tag collar. Your greyhound's tag collar is a narrow collar that does what it says. It's used to hold their identity tag. It's typically quite narrow and fits loosely, often around the lower part of the neck rather than up around the back of their ears. Sometimes it's called a house collar, which is a little bit odd really because the dog really needs to wear it when they're out of the house, not when they're in the house. You would never attach the greyhound's lead to their tag collar as you might in other breeds where there's just the one collar. So the tag collar is just for their ID tag. We also want to be careful never to be tempted to grab hold of it because this could be quite harmful or painful for the dog. The throat is a very delicate area. There's a lot of vessels here and you could actually damage their throat if you were to pull or to hold on to that tag collar whilst they lunged forwards. Yes, it might be in an absolute emergency, you would have to grab hold of it. But as a general rule, we do not want to be holding the dog or moving them round using that tag collar. If you do find yourself reaching for the tag collar, it might be better to consider whether you don't leave it on in the house at all. If you grab their collar and it hurts, they may become fearful of you reaching for that area in future. They might become head shy or it may be that they even growl at you to warn you not to reach for their head or their neck. If you do feel the need to have something on the dog that you could hold on to in an emergency, it would be better that you had a wider collar. And there are some tag collars that are wider, so you could look at one of those, or you could leave a harness on the dog whilst you're indoors with them. Let's look at some options for tag collars. As I said, typically they're very narrow. This is the narrowest sort, a braided one. This fits almost like a necklace. Yes, that they do. This is Gandalf's collar. This is a webbing strap. This one has a clip, so it comes undone rather than slipping over their head. And this is a fabric one. It's ribbon and webbing in the middle so it's quite strong adjustable through this buckle but it doesn't unclip so this isn't going to come off except if it breaks which is something to consider if the dog may get stuck this is also a tag collar although it's quite a lot wider it adjusts at this buckle to one set length and that is the length it's going to be so this is a wider tag collar thinking about the tags themselves there are three options you could have a tag such as Gandalf does which is an engraved disc there is also the option to have a little cylinder where you write on a piece of paper and the details are inside and the third option is that you can have a little strap that fits along the length of the collar. I don't have one of those to show you, but the advantage of that is that they won't jingle. So they are quieter for the dog. We said that we needed to have an ID tag on this collar. In the UK, that is a legal requirement that the dog wears an ID tag when they're out in public and a public place now includes in your car. What do we have to have actually on that collar to meet that legal requirement? First of all, we need to have your name. Doesn't need to be your full name. Most people use their surname and it needs to have your address. You might not want to put your whole address. It is sufficient to have the postcode and the house number because they can find you from just that basic information. Those are the legal requirements. However, some people also add their phone number, which can help the dog be connected back to you more quickly. They might also have little comments such as I'm chipped or check my chip, something like that. Some people put the dog's name. Personally, I'm not in favour of that because if your dog was stolen and the person who's stolen their your dog is using their name, it makes it less easy for someone to tell that it's not their dog. 
so I personally don't put the dog's name on but again that is another option if you wish and when should they wear it as we've said in the UK it's a legal requirement for them to wear it when they are out of the house and it can be a good idea for them to wear something all the time at least at first when you home them because if there could be a risk of them escaping, maybe sneaking through between your legs when you open the front door or sneaking out through a gate that wasn't fastened properly, then of course, if they do manage to escape, if they're wearing their collar, it's much easier for someone to reunite them back to you. If they're not, then someone would have to take them to the vet to have their microchip checked. So we do also want to make sure that their microchip details are up to date. I would, however, take the collar off at night because even a light collar adds some weight and pressure to the neck and it could be nice for them to go naked some of the time, as Daisy is here. And of course, if they were sleeping in a crate, there is the risk that they could catch it. So if the dog is going to be in a crate, I would always take the collar off before they are put to bed in their crate. So that's all for today. In part two, we're going to talk about our walking out collars. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Look out for new videos every Monday and why not subscribe so you don't miss out.